Pirates, 15 stars including Cheech and Chong, Marty Feldman, Madeline Kahn, Peter Boyle, the Monty Python, Graham Chapman, Eric Idle, John Cleese, and a shipload of other fools. Group Madness, the making of Yellowbeard. Is your name Dan? Yes. I need your head, my lad. You're my father. So your mother says, but that's no reason to believe it. Never trust a woman or a government. Well, pleased to meet you. I haven't got time for idle chit-chat. I need your head. Well, that makes a change. Mother seems to disapprove of me using it at all. You're not going to use it. You're going to lose it, lad. I'm going to use it. Right, put your neck over there. It'll be cleaner that way. You want to cut my head off? What for? I don't want to lug your body halfway around the world, do I? Your head's got a map on it that I need. Well, you don't need to kill me for it. Look, why don't you copy it? What? And have two maps? Bugger off. <laughs> Look, if you cut my head off, it'll start to putrefy. Do what? Uh, putrefy. Go rotten. Yeah, it would ooze a lot. Heads do, but I can live with that. No, stop. Look, I could help you, Dad. Everyone will be following you, and if they catch you, they'll have the map. Bugger them. I'll eat it first. Won't be the first head I've eaten. But then you'll have lost it forever. Look, wouldn't it be better to leave it where it's safe? What? And take you along? You're not pirate material. You wouldn't fit in. Well, to fit into this group... I got to admit, it was a bit intimidating. I mean, picture yourself in your first comedy playing opposite all these greats. masters of madness in one place, all of them feeding on each other's craziness. It became more and more outrageous. Finally, it reached a point of group madness. Tommy Chung here in Yellowbeard saying we'll be right back. Don't go away. That's right. <laughs> Hello. You won't know me, but I have Cliff Robertson's American Express card. David Bagelman for American Express. <laughs> Story of yellow beard. This guy, he used to eat a lot of applesauce and have this black beard first. I would say it is a comedy adventure film. A swashbuckler. It's a chase. A chase for treasure. It's an analogy about the American Constitution. It originally started with uh, Keith Moon, the drummer of The Who, saying he'd love to be involved in an adventure movie. It was the, uh, the result of making the deal before they had anything else. Uh, he offered us some money to develop the idea, which he had in his case with him at the time. And he said, I got a great idea. Why don't we do a pirate movie? That sounds like good fun, and we can um, go and shoot in nice locations. And so we started writing it. I read the script, and it's a very funny movie. Everybody's funny. These funny guys get on a ship, and they, you know, they bop each other over the head. You know, somebody falls overboard. They're saying it's very funny. 
which is usually the kiss of death. You know, if you enjoy seeing blind beggars being robbed, this is the movie for you. Right. Jello beard. What the story? Jello beard. Jello, Jello, Jello beard. Jello by the way, it's not yellow beard. It's Jello beard. He's vicious, quite vicious, and uh, in fact, so vicious he would even kill inanimate objects. And he tries to bugger everything in sight. What he does. What he does. If it's not sex, it's violence, but it's usually a combination of the two. Straight to gay to bi, <laughs> back to straight. Nice a lesbian. Meanwhile, back in the jungle, it's the search for this treasure. She's enormous. You know, the treasure's probably so big you can make four or five sequels. <laughs> When you've seen this film, you'll hardly believe it. It's a remake. True story, lurking and looming. Machismo. He's an albino. Pirate. Desperate men. Bad pirates. Beautiful women. And bullfighting. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean? It's hot. It's all about that. And they end up in a treasure room, they have a sword fight, and everybody goes home. In a nutshell, that's yellow beard. <laughs> I was wanted your advice on a matter of etiquette. Now, does one curtsy before saying hello, or does one go down while speaking? Oh, dear, that's tricky. Ah. Oh, excuse me, Admiral. I must just have a word with this gentleman. I shall be a moment. Oh, 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 see. Who's that uh, oh, chap who oh, just sees her oh, wife? Do you know him? Oh, steady, steady. Uh, uh, seems to have taken quite a shine to uh, Lady L. Yes. Not many people do, you know, but uh, when they do, they do. Yellow beard. Yellow beard. Yellow beard. A tall, rough man with a big yellow beard. Yellow beard. Yellow beard. Ah, Mr. Yellowbeard, Captain Dane, you scum! What? Graham Chapman came from a perfectly good family, went through medical school, and turned into this. The movie began as a mad gleam in Graham's eye. He conceived it, co-wrote it, and plays the title role. More than anyone else, he's to blame. You wanted me to talk about the scene we're about to shoot. Well, it's right at the end of the movie, or very nearly, where we surprise Clement and Mansell, who have run off with the treasure, by turning up. Come on, lad! There's pirating to be done! When Graham does the scene, he takes a cosmic leap. I mean, he goes into character, and, and he's just in, he's in the ozone. And he's extremely intense, and you know you'll see it in his performances. He has an incredible intensity to Yellowbeard or anything that Graham does. Seems to have taken a mild dislike to the priests. Look, I'm dying today, so that should be a restful piece of filming after I've actually died. I get to lie there for the rest of the day. Therefore, Her Majesty has graciously agreed to increase your sentence a further 140 years, case dismissed. Yeah! I've got it! Sorry. Graham Chapman met Eric Idle 20 years ago. Together, they laid the python egg. A versatile actor in the meaning of life, Eric plays 17 parts. Eleven men, four women, one fish, and half a tiger. This time he plays Commander Clement, Yellowbeard's arch rival. Commander Clement, Royal I Navy. wouldn't want to be in his shoes. What impressed me uh, most about Eric is what an incredible film actor he is. He's just constantly aware during the take, while he's playing a scene, of how much to project to the camera. Welcome, Commander Clement. Get that off to Her Majesty right away. Eric is extremely relaxed uh, while he's acting. How, sir? Huh? By pigeon, Mansell. Pigeon, sir? Surely you didn't forget to bring the pigeon, Mansell. And so, Mansell and Clement are in trouble. What happens to them, we'll see on Mansell and Clement, the movie. 
what comedy does is to take it just outside of the person and look at how ridiculous we all are. We're not sure whether we like baptism or not, so we bob about a bit. A tremendous amount of fun. Yes. And of course, one does get the opportunity to meet some tremendous first class people. Oh dear, my knickers, I'm coming up. Well, don't give me much. All working together as a. What's the word? No, not unit. Team, no. Fish? Uh, fish, yes, exactly. I'm not aboard, sweetheart. I'm an actor. What? How does it feel to be aboard the bounty? Is this the bounty? <laughs> they said victory. You got the wrong ship. So comedy has to be treating the same things that tragedy or drama does, but inviting you to laugh at them. There you are, sir. Nothing again. Nothing whatsoever. Behind you, Mansell. I know you are, sir. There's a ship behind you. Good Lord, sir! It's the Edith! Sir? Of course it's the Edith, Mansell. But, sir, yes. it is behind us and we're supposed to be following it, sir. And, well, how can we be, sir? Oh! What's funny is people take themselves seriously. <laughs> Part of your job is to become extremely zen and put up with the uncomfortableness or just, uh, just unpleasantness and get on with it. Will you? I'm sorry, sweetheart. You know, he's trying to make a documentary and you're trying to be like life. It's called being professional. Thank you very much. I'm cut. Oh, still running? Yes, we're still running. I'll give you a hint. It's not until the end of the movie. So don't leave your seats. Just stick around and you'll see my part. Uh, I hope you don't mind us tying up the captain like that, sir. No, not at all. Well, I was only following your lead. I mean, well, you're killing Mr. Crisp was an example to us all. But I only hit him with a bucket, and then everything went blank. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like that, killing. <laughs> Yellowbeard is made up of three main groups. Monty Python, Cheech and Chong, and the Mel Brooks people, which includes Peter Boyle, Marty Feldman, and Madeline Kahn. Peter Boyle is known for both comedy and straight acting, from the hard hat bigot in the title role of Joe to the monster in Young Frankenstein. More than anyone, he straddles both worlds. This is my world, and welcome to it. I play uh, the character named Mr. Moon, who was in years past Yellowbeard's bosun. I think probably in terms of character values, Mr. Moon has always felt uh, a little upstaged by Yellowbeard and, and would like to get even. Hands off my treasure, bosun Moon. I said, hands off! Do I have to do everything myself? If you're around the set in yeah. a comedy, I mean, the way I, I experience it is it's usually a little more fun, you know, because everybody's thinking funny, and, and it, it, it pervades the atmosphere. We do know that we're playing a comedy, and there's a certain, you know, sort of green light, you know, so therefore anything goes. Peter is a very intense, very serious actor. Uh, he loves to work. Uh, we did a sword fight with him the other day, and after the third or fourth take, I printed it and it was fine and he wanted to just keep going because the man loves to work. No, I gotta come back to your cheek. Okay. You know, You're right. It's not ready yeah. to disarm. Okay, so There's still on. another scene. Yeah. One lunch. Right. And then it's boom. Go back to his brain. Boom. Boom. Then you come yeah. back on guard. Yeah. 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 Beard. Oh, Mr. Moon, sir. I, I was following him and, and then I thought I was being followed, if you follow me. 
We'll follow you. Some stupid blind man. Well, we've got to follow Yellowbeard and make sure no one else is following him. Do you follow me? I was lucky in this film that everything I, I had to do, all the funny stuff, was with uh, Marty Feldman. Do the whole uh, thing. Want me to come the whole way? Just from here. Okay. There ain't folks is coming, there's dancing tonight. Captain Moon, sir, they've captured Dan and they're setting a trap for the others. Excellent. They're making it easy for us. Well done, Gilbert. <laughs> It's it's all mysterious, you know. I mean, uh, it's a mysterious business. I still will go through many days, weeks, or months where I, I basically feel I can't, I can't, I'm never going to be able. To, uh, not only I'll never work again, but I really can't act anyway. So how do, how did I even, you know? But then uh, you go try it again, and, and once the, once the juice starts to flow, it's uh, it's that uh, transformation, the feeling of life. Sometimes you're on top of the mountain. At the end of a day's filming of the unreal thing, suddenly it's time for the real thing. Yes, Coca-Cola. any of the hundreds of thousands of people who work for me and worship me, they will tell you that I'm not at all on any kind of ego trip. So you're kind of down to earth guy? I'm very down to earth, yeah. Whoa! He is, a, he is an absolute slug of a person. I don't know. I mean, the man just kind of slides around the set in a roll on my action. I here he is how now. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Mr. Personality, here he is. Yeah, nice seeing you. Yeah, let's see. You. See, that's about as far as it goes, you know. Mel Damsky, who is the director, has had an enormous background in television, understands tight schedules, understands uh, the proper coverage. Billy Wilder said, if you have a funny bone, you, can, you, you, know, you make good choices. And his instincts are right. Beautiful day, and we're shooting inside all day. A rehearsal, please. All right, I'll need your camera for this, like. Up your camera, too. <laughs> You'll be right over that here. I'll be right over back here. Yeah. I was there when you called me over, remember? Oh. Where did they get this guy? <laughs> difference is it between British and American humor? Oh, how very difficult. Um, uh, There's a huge difference. Um, about four or five million dollars a shot, I'd say. British are kind of cooler and perhaps more satirical. The British do not speak English very well. <laughs> sure. um, American humor quite... is very much about, as you see, well, emotional you, body acting. Well, what English I, acting yeah. is about understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think I think Englishmen tend to underplay humor as they tend to under uh, emote in any direction. Well, the chief difference between the British and the Americans in terms of sense of humor is that we have one and they don't. But on the other hand, uh, Mike Horton over there, Mike Horton over there is uh, eating that swill. So that shows a certain sense of humor, doesn't it? I think what makes you laugh makes you laugh. It's one dollar. That's an American joke. The English, the English joke is this. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. He's a jungle dude, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, I want to be interviewed. 
Uh... You, you give me no choice. I shall have to. I shall have to give up completely. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, everyone. I can't do a Spanish accent, so I, I did a lisp instead. It was like a Castilian, where he just talked like he had a speech impediment. And when the invaders reach the throne room, uh... my men will rise up and dispatch all with majestic heavenly force. Magnificent strategy, your arrogance. But it must look realistic. Anyone caught overacting, I will personally scare to death. See, there's the girls over there. Oh, even it's the ginch. We got some little ginch. hot ginch coming up board. New white girls coming on board. <laughs> Imports. Oh. They go over us he-man kind of guys, you know. <laughs> These two uh, crazy Spaniards. Uh, they're they're thrown in there because they need the marquee uh, <laughs> value. <laughs> So they gotta write them in somewhere, so we're Spaniards. Which is more than anybody could reasonably hope for, your holy ruthlessness. Instead, you may bang your head on the floor until forgiven. Oh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Part of the, the process for this film, particular film, is to do the script as written and to make it funny. I think it's a, a bigger challenge than to uh, add our own stuff in there. Because, uh, you know, I mean, we know we can be funny by ourselves, but can we take a written page and make that funny? But all I know is when Cheech and I were on, you know, we cracked everybody up. Everybody was having a good time. We just bring energy, I think, into the scene. Richard, I understand your your actual wife is coming soon. Is that true? Uh, what are you gonna do about these two when they go? Well, they're gonna have to meet him eventually. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> now, is this the Mexican family? This is the Mexican yeah. family. This is with a half Mexican family. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we, we breed them especially for these right. half breeds. And the other one lives where? The other <laughs> one lives though. Well, I got him in London, Paris, Rome, Geneva, Switzerland. <laughs> This is kind of a you know, big international comedy cast. It's really the first time that a lot of our generation comics kind of got together for a movie. And uh, I always wanted to work with Monty Python guys. It was nice being in a picture with Peter Boyle and Marty Feldman and uh, James Mason and all those guys. That's what's fun being on this movie, that it's someone else's grossness that we get to do. <laughs> how would you get your accent? Uh, a little accent shop on Ventura Boulevard in the Valley. Nobody knows about it, and I just go there by myself. That's where you want to come up, you know, cheap. <laughs> Got me another white girl. <laughs> we gotta hurry, everybody. Got do your parents know what you do for a living? Have you told them yet? Or? Well, I told them I was in movies, and they said they'd much rather I go back to dope running. But it's yin and yang, you know, Cheech and Chong. You know, I'm passive, he's, he's uh, very aggressive, mm -hmm. and it works perfectly. We complement each other, that's why we're together. Me and Ty have been together longer than I've ever been with any woman, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. way longer, and, and you get these points, man, it's just like, oh, you gotta just talk it out, and it's very painful sometimes, but you just do it, because you want, you want that relationship to go on, other than the fame and the money, because it's mm -hmm. really a lot of fun. I mean, he's my best friend, you know. Teach and Chung and Montezuma's Revenge. How's that for a Mexican? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Mexican Express. Nothing acts faster. Well, little sweet. <laughs> Don't go away. Yellow Beard will be right back. Come on, girls. Get the plate. <laughs> Looking for the very rare Marty Feldman creature. We believe that he's somewhere in this untouched land, somewhere here. He could be, if you care to pan along there, he could be behind one of those chairs, or he could even be disguised as one of those chairs. <laughs> this could be very dangerous. Hey, yo, we're here to see Mr. Feldman? No, no. Mr. Feldman? No. Mr. Feldman? No. Mr. Feldman? No. Mr. Feldman? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Feldman, can we ask you a couple questions? Mr. Feldman? Mr. Feldman, just be very quick. Just one or two oh, questions. In the name of the law. All right, and not death. <laughs> 
John Cleese, one of England's oh, biggest stars, many, is the Python many, many, in Black. Many, many. He plays the sinister Blind Pew, a deadly killer whose sixth sense keeps him alive and stabbing. He, along with Graham and Eric, started the Monty Python Flying Circus. Did you see... He's blind, you stupid son! I may be blind, but I have a cute earring. I'm not interested in your jewelry, cloth eyes. I'm trying to conduct... A... Yellow beard was here. Which way did he go? I can't answer that. You'll have to ask me again. Also, I dropped my purse. <laughs> John is surprisingly serious as a person and has a very strong conceptual understanding of comedy. I should say what actor is. John Cleese. Very good. Very good. So professional with John. Oh, really. Oh, so lovely. lovely to work with. Oh, I'm so. Bugger off, you evil git. Oh, evening, Doctor. I was just saying good day to Mr. Pugh. Yeah, what do you want? What do you want? We were standing on the corner. What's the film that brought you three together? Uh, Young, Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yeah. In, in the sense that we are, in any sense, Can together. We, in so the sense that we are, in any sense, together. Which way? Yeah. Which way? We yeah. find yeah. ourselves, we find ourselves, together, ourselves at times. together at times. And it's uh, it's interesting because we like each other basically as people and as actors and as human beings and individuals. Hello, sugar jaws. What you again? Again? I haven't seen you for fifteen years. What is it this time? Do you remember just before you were arrested, we were having a cuddle? Get on with it, woman. You have just become the father of a twenty-year-old bouncing boy called Dave. <laughs> That was pretty right good, away, wasn't it? Yeah, that was good. Uh, I was born in a beach town, but moved to New York City as a real little girl with my mother. Grew up in New York City, and I still live there. I never thought about doing movies. I was acting, singing, but not movies. What's Up, Doc? was my first film. I was asked to go on this interview for this movie. I didn't want to go. You know, I mean, Hollywood just seemed like a China or something to me. I'd just like to see a few of my little dreams come true. I've always wanted to buy Denmark and be richer than the Queen. It really changed my whole life. It's like going with life. Uh, oh, it's taking me in a direction I never planned on going. Oh, I better go, though. I think I should go this way, even though I'm going that way. Go this way, and your whole life changes. I mean, it's outrageously funny. <laughs> They're really funny. They're, they are all so different, each one. There's, this group has a great variety, and they're very clever. They're very intelligent. Amazing group of uh, people. And I love that. That's very nice. That's very nice. What could be nicer? People are nice to me. They promised her a decent room on this movie with her own bath. <laughs> Ready to talk yet, Mrs. Beard? No! Take it away, Mr. Beamish. Aye, aye, sir. Down. I don't usually play comedy parts because uh, people usually hire me to um, look dreadfully serious. But you see, if I look dreadfully serious with great sincerity, well, it comes to a point where it becomes comedy, you see through no effort on my part. My name is Captain Hughes. Now, in fairness to you all, I'm duty-bound to put the question, is there anyone here who does not wish to be a member of Her Majesty's Navy? Me, sir. Is there anyone else who is reluctant to serve? When he came out today and said, I'm Captain Hughes, it was just terrific. It was like James Mason doing James Mason. Real acting is just make-believe, you know? 
kind of stuff that kids do. This, this was a unique opportunity for uh, James Mason to give his opinion on the script. He actually shot one of the writers. Graham, is it true that Mason really hated the script? Well, I'm a bit busy at the moment because they've got this. There's another of the executive writers on our movie, Bernard. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Are you writer here? I'm too busy. Oh, come on. Come on. We just want to just with you. No. I just want to ask you Look, something. I'm far too busy. I've got things to do. Excuse me. Please, no. Group Madness will be right back, so hang in there. <laughs> this is supposed to represent the quayside in Portsmouth, England in 1707. <laughs> we don't shoot it for another 12 hours. It'll be ready. Every se everything seems to be ready. Right at the last minute, Mexico. Since it was cheaper to build the set here than to take the boat to England, well, here we are doing a little bit of England and Mexico. <laughs> If you're known for comedy, most people approach you smiling. Uh, nobody's looking to hurt you. If you're Charles Bronson, somebody may want to take you out in the bar because you look tough and you play tough parts. But I'm a comedian, and as you see, wonderfully and fitfully and idiosyncratically made. So most people feel that I'm like some sort of pet. Um, could bite, but not severely. But to have an effect on that audience, that's the most enjoyable thing, I think. You know? To convey a real emotion, to communicate something, um, some more than information, to be able to move an audience in some way, uh, either to laughter or to proverbially to tears. The days when you feel you've done it, you know, when you've done a good scene, you know it. It's a catharsis. As Dorothy Parker said about writing, I enjoy having written. Well, I enjoy having acted. Um, it works all the demons out of my system, exorcises them. I, I used to be rather violent before I became an actor. I was always getting in fights. Uh, it's obviously, I've sublimated my violence and found a way of using it uh, in my acting. Wait a minute. What is that? It's a crocodile, sir. What's it for? Well, um, each sailor is uh, allowed uh, by tradition a pet, sir. Open it up. Open it up. Open it up. There are buttons down the side. The ancient superstition that a woman on board brings bad luck is now a proven scientific fact. Nice try, Rosie. Shouldn't bother, love. They're fairly strict on this one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's take a lunch at Polo Lounge sometime. He's probably the nicest man I've met in a long time. He really is. He has an ability to become one of the natives wherever he goes. People flock to him. He magnetizes people. Can I help you? Um, I do beg your pardon. Uh, my, my arm seems to have uh, slipped, as it were, accidentally oh. into your bag. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> We've All right, Dan. If you're my son, prove it. Kill this stupid old bugger. Oh, hold your horses. Oh, I can't kill him. He brought me up. Just like a father. Oh, you mean he's beaten you and kicked you and smashed you in the teeth? Yes. No. No. He's been kind and gentle. What kind of father is that? Peter Cook, one of the co-writers, best known for his work with Dudley Moore in Beyond the Fringe, plays the part of Lord Lamborn. Peter describes his character as something of a twit who joins the adventure just to get away from his wife. It was great, so when I was about 12 years old, sold something to Punch, which is our sort of oldest humorous magazine. I got like four guineas for that, and I thought, my goodness, I can make it. That's quite a lot of money. I can make a living this way. Can you understand a word he says? I mean, can you understand one word he says? Say something. Say something. Peter. What? Say something. What did you say? What? See what I mean? A strong voice. I'm a Shakespearean stage actor, really. Oh, bring me all those wondrous gifts that know the hallowed universe of gods that lasted down upon our shores. I say, I'll give you three farthings, young lady. 
We say in Espana. This and a little bullfight afterwards make my day. Please, we're trying to do a film. <laughs> This scene's called Dead Whales in the Sunset. I can speak a bit of Spanish. Una cerveza, por favor. That's Spanish for uh, one beer, please. Yeah. My shells. Gracias. That's thank you. A fool's whale. That's right, fool's whale. Just like Pete and me, we were up in the Klondike, you know, panning for wood. Remember that? I remember those oh, days. Oh, Lord. Well, we got up there and we found that uh, vein of mahogany and we found out it was just fool's mahogany. mahogany. <laughs> That's right. It wasn't real mahogany. In fact, our whole life, Ken, I, I don't think you'll mind my admitting this. I think we're a pair of fool fools. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I'm doing two characters. Actually, I played uh, Mr. Crisp, who is incredibly evil. Oh, you English, you always complain. And then I play uh, uh, Monsieur Viduco, who is uh, so he's, uh, he invents a torture device, a very kind, so that when you turn the watchets and the screws, He's very effective, your acute horrendousness. Meanwhile, I am kind of kicking my heels up and having a heck of a time down here with all of these crazy guys, like Mike Hart and all that. <laughs> This is a really crazy guy. My God, what a fantastic, what a fantastic individual. <laughs> Unbelievable, what a guy, huh? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> play the part of Dr. Gilpin, who's the sort of, uh, um, the brains of the outfit. And I tag along with them because I think it would be interesting to uh, find a lot of foreign plants, herbs, medicines, that sort of thing. A sort of Charles Darwin at the time. <laughs> I think I would say that I prefer comedy roles, uh, on the whole. I've done a lot of straight work. You know, Michael's a, a classical Shakespearean actor. When I was in England, I saw... The King Lear he did and uh, what he is is an, an actor who uh, is, is so good that he, he acts comedy as well as anything else well, what sort of power what well what, what sort of power do you, do you have my divine right to command over life and death oh, 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 oh that's well, all that that sort of power I yeah, thought yeah. perhaps you meant um, uh, uh, mechanical uh, energy I think one can reach the heart of people through comedy, perhaps better than any other way. As ruler, my supremacy is absolute on this island. Oh, I, I, I thought this was an uh, asshole. Not at all. No, no not at all. What is it? Tell him about Got these pots that we found in our room last night, well, darling. I just feel that we shouldn't go to sleep. No, no you I don't go to sleep while you find these pods in the room, sleeping. no. Now, this one is beginning to look a little like Yvonne. You can see that. <laughs> you see there? You know, here's your little mouth. Uh, it looks, uh, go like this with your mouth, Yvonne. See? It looks just like her, don't it? Oh, there you are. We'll be right back. Excellent. Sitting on the beach <clears throat> in uh, Ishtopa and leaving the worries of my profession behind, and an 18th century galleon pulled around the cove on a longboat that came to the shore carrying half Monty Python crown and told me Chish and Chong were on their way. <laughs> This is the end of my holiday. Um, would I do something in the movie Yellow Bill? Play a fin, a sharp fin. Jolly good, Henson. Thank you, sir. Well done. Shall I meet you in the pump room, sir? 
That's, that's, that's all I've been briefed on. 5C, take one. And action. Somewhere out there is a film waiting for me to go in. What I do in it, I don't know. <laughs> the fat one on the throne, Mr. Queen. She's not very well today, so I should kneel up window her. Well, Spike was the uh, sort of really amazing, inventive, comic genius, really. I mean, he wrote these incredible shows called The Goon Shows. Um, you know, he's just an English sort of loony. It's better than the film. Christ almighty, where do they put this stuff? What's in here? I have a piece of paper here with a time on, you see. 9.18. Stopped. <laughs> Get a fresh piece of paper. I'm playing Queen Anne of England. I've been trying to find out about her. She had 18 children, I guess, and they all died. I love playing queens, if I'm used the phrase. Um, I'm not often asked, unfortunately. Mr. Prostitute. Part of my deal was that um, I'd be friendly to basically all of the extras, everyone on board. Right. Um, it's, I mean, what can I say? It's a girl's dream come true. Alone at sea with all of the pirates. Taking chances, they're just the men I see. Doing sea dances at set to run, to run, to set, to set your sights, to set your sights.